welcome back to the second half of our series around licenses. Uh, we will continue talking about permissive licenses today. All right. So there are there is one there are two main modern permissive licenses, and it's the Apache license version two, um, which has some um, some peculiar peculiar peculiar. Yeah, never mind. It's it has some of its own strangeness in it. So um, it's a permissive license, but you can't re-license unmodified parts that you do. So you can't close source stuff that you didn't change at all. And you need to state, if so if you base your software on this software and you change stuff, then you need to state what's been changed in those changed files. Uh, and uh, a nice thing, which is, I think, why we call these modern, is that the Apache license grants you a license to any patent that the sort of author had or has for the um, for the software, so that you don't um, you can never be sued for using it for infringing on a patent, because then the license will be, be void. Interestingly, interestingly, I found out while writing these slides that the OpenBSD guys, they don't like this at all. Mm -hmm. uh, and they have a kind of um, uh, policy-wise reason for this. And they say that this patent thing requires you, as the author, to relinquish some rights um, in order to release the software. Uh, and they think that's uh, an unacceptable thing. That you have to you have to remove some rights. Normally, with these permissive licenses, you know you only you only give it away, but you still have all the rights. Uh, whereas with these uh, patent grants, you actually uh, well you say that I will never sue you for any patent thing, which is you know in effect giving away some rights. It, a question there around the first bullet. So so when it says unmodified parts, let, let's say I, I take a big project and I modify one function in a file with multiple functions and so on. Where 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 does the license start and end, so to speak? It's it, if, is the entire if, if, component if, modified when I modify a single thing, or is it only that? No, if thing? if I'm not mistaken, it's a per file thing. Uh, so you need so to it, touch so if, all the files and sort of do that for a purpose. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and Shane, I mean, modification, I guess, uh, has to do with like not just changing one word somewhere, but actually changing what it does, I suppose. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, so some notable users of uh, the Apache license, apart from the Apache Foundation stuff, of course, <laughs> is uh, Kubernetes and uh, and pdf.js, the uh, the PDF reader that is in the Mozilla um, Firefox thing. Uh, and there are some other permissive well, licenses. There is some kind of special clause, I think, with Apache that I may be mistaken here, that if there is a notice file or something, then you must include that in the uh, distribution. Quick interruption. This is correct. So uh, in Apache license version two, uh, under the fourth section, redistribution, under the subsection D, uh, the notice file is covered. Um, it must be uh, made available in at least one of the following places. Within a notice file, that's distributed with the derivative works, within the source form or documentation, if provided along, along with the derivative works, or within a display generated by the derivative works, so in, in the UI, if, uh, if it does have a UI. And there it has to be wherever such third-party notices normally appear, so you can't really hide it away. So, back to the show. I just wanted to list some other permissive licenses, and I tried putting them in some kind of categories here. So there is the uh, WTF public license, which is a, it, it's kind of a public domain-ish one, but it's also originally, as far as I understood it, made as a joke. It just says, do what the fuck you want with the software. Uh, and there are you know, no warranty and so on. And then we have, of course, things like beerware, which is, uh, you know, a very permissive thing. But you are encouraged to to buy a beer to the author. 
if, if you meet if you ever meet the author you're so you're not required you're just encouraged to to buy them a beer but Austin is and such also, a crazy place yeah and i just realized that i, I didn't mention this in the slides but uh, vim is a, a variant of this of course it's it's charity wear it's a free software but you are encouraged to donate money to the children of Uganda. So it's a similar thing. And then, of course, as we said before, with this public domain, we have the unlicense, which is a license, but it tries its best to put things in the public domain. And there's also the common uh, Creative Commons Zero, which I'm not sure if it's recommended for software, but it's, it can be used for other creative works for, for places where you don't have a public domain thing. Um, and the Sedlib license or the Lib PNG license are, um, well, I mean, they're not used, I think, in anything else than Zlib and Lib PNG, but those are so, uh, uh, th those are everywhere. So it's, it's, it's worth uh, mentioning them here, I guess. Um, I would they also, also put, they, mm -hmm? sorry, uh, wouldn't Lib uh, Curl's license fit in here? It would, yeah. It's it's also a permissive license. Um, I didn't actually look at it before this, <laughs> but uh, yeah, as far as I remember, it is it is another permissive license. Um, and I think on the bottom left here, the permissive with reservations. Maybe that's the topic for a completely different uh, part of the series. But there's the for example, this commons clause, which is a clause you may add to, to a license, which says basically, apart from what it says in the license, you are not allowed to sell the software. Um, so, I mean, it's similar to this uh, Creative Commons non-commercial license, which then per I, by definition isn't an open source license at least. Exactly, yeah. Uh, and and this caused a lot of controversy which i think is is worthy of, of its own episode <laughs> definitely we will perhaps. come back to that and perhaps with a lawyer that would be good yeah yeah uh, and then i think it's worth mentioning one more license which is sort of in the in the badlands between the copyleft world and the permissive world and that's the mozilla public license um it's it also grants you patent rights, like the Apache license, and it's uh, what we call a weak copyleft. So if you make a combined work with some software that's under the MPL, then uh, you, may, may, you may place the original work as, you may relicense you know, the, the, the combined work that you make uh, in any license you like, but the original um, Mozilla license work that you use must be freely available. You have to be able to get the source for those parts. Um, and uh, there's also an explicit compatibility clause with, uh, with the GPL and the LGPL and the AGPL that you may release software under the M that's under the Mozilla public license under the GPL licenses if you want to. So it's sort of, you can, you can change it that way as well. Yeah. And I think the, this Mozilla public license is interesting because it's, uh, it tries to make like a compromise uh, between this kind of strong copyleft where you have to put the, the whole uh, combined works under the same license and the permissive world where you want things to be able to use, be used as much as possible without restrictions, sort of. Uh, and it's, yeah. I don't know if I if I like this a lot or if I don't like it. It's well. Uh, no, it, it's it's kind of, one of the things I don't like with MPL too is that I never know where to put it when presenting it. Is it a, like a copyleft and a very weak such, or is it uh, like? A couple of the version of, of a permissive. That's what I don't exactly. Like. Yeah, I, I had the same issue. That's why it ended up in the last slide here. 
But but just looking back, so, so I mean, if you look at the modern permissive licenses, the the big change I'd say is the patent, we, which again is something that we exactly. should discuss with a lawyer, uh, because software patents is also something that is accepted or not accepted in different parts of the world. Uh, but it is good to have it covered when you make at least physical products, for instance. Um, yeah, because there I think I mean, they apply internationally. Yeah, and I mean these licenses, no, they didn't come into life uh, with these patent clauses just because it's fun. It, it, there was uh, a real problem around people getting sued for patents uh, yep. when using I'll, free software licenses. I'll actually put a link up in the corner here on the, on the YouTube film for a, a talk about the Open Innovation Initiative, I think it's called, uh, which is a patent pool for to protect Linux and sort of central uh, central components oh, yeah. in yeah. the open source community, uh, which is free to join. Um, and big players have joined it, which means by joining that pool, you, you won't get sued by major players like IBM, for instance. Yeah, and you, you also pledge that you won't sue anyone else. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You're joining with. Yeah. So I guess that's the end of the permissive licenses. So see you around next time.